Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So, we're going to be making this, oh his hair's all messed up, this cute little zebra. It's hard to see his hair in here, I don't know if it is, maybe just on my camera. But, um, we're kicking it old school. We, we've, we've sewed on the arms and we've sewed on the legs. Um, we're not crocheting it on. Um, this tail is actually stuffed. <laughs> we do a little tail too. Anyway, the head is also sewn on, which is not something I generally do, but um, actually I don't think I've ever done it. Um, <laughs> I wanted the stripes to go different ways, and that's why I sewed the head on. So that's what this is all about. But I didn't sew the muzzle on. Usually I'm building it all together and I sew the muzzle on. The muzzle is built into the head and the head is sewn to the body just so the stripes go different ways. So let's get started. So I've chosen to use a red background because I'm working with black and white and I just I think with my table being the color it is with white and purple on it that it would just not work out so well so you're gonna notice this will take time to change from fuzzy to clear because of the color I'm using so um, I'm using a 4.5 and the only colors we're using are black and white both of mine are just a four weight they're not worsted so the zebra is fairly large without it being worsted weight yarn. I'm going to zoom out a bit. Laying down about um, 17 inches long and then I don't know arm to arm about six inches wide arm to arm. I chose to hide my it's not a seam, that's my color changes. I decided to hide them because an arm's there. When he's sitting up, an arm is there. That's why that's in that spot. Because um, we're building this in amigurumi, so you're gonna have this offset. There is a way to get around it, and I will talk about that in the video. Um, there are places that I did um, use this technique that I just made up. Um, it's probably not for everybody, but the arms and legs don't have these on, well this one does, um, because I use this technique and it's just constantly moving your stitch marker spot. So, again, let's get into this. So, we're going to start with the head. So we're gonna be starting making the back of the head, moving up to the muzzle area. That's the direction that we're gonna be headed. Um, let's start with white. I started with white for the back of my head. So, I'm going to kind of zoom back in here. I'm going to make a magic ring. Because we're working in amigurumi, you're going to need to use a hook size that's less than what your yarn calls for. That's why I'm using a 4.5 because both these yarns call for a 5 millimeter hook. So I went down in hook size. Amigurumi is just done. Um, it's a tighter weave. You're also going to need a stitch marker. Mine unfortunately is red so I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep losing it. I'll just put it on my thing. So I got a whole thing of colors. I should just switch my colors. Let's go green. So you're going to put six single crochets in this magic ring. I did turn my light up too, so hopefully it's not too bright. So your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around. This will bring you up to 12 stitches. So if you're using a stitch marker, it goes in on your first stitch, not your second one. That's my 12. Pull your middle closed 
this next round I like to weave this guy in making sure my middle stays closed um, this is the back of the head so it's kind of imperative that it kind of looks decent so you can do whatever you want you don't need to do it I know some people find it difficult I used to find it difficult too you're gonna do one single crochet and an increase for this next round this will bring you up to 18 stitches that's number one your marker always counts as number one so your next stitch is going to be two single crochets in the same space and repeat Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase and this will bring you up to 24 stitches. That's number one. That's two single crochets and then your next stitch gets the increase of so two single crochets in the same space. You're going to see a little bloop there because my card filled up and I had to change cards. <laughs> So, I hate when that happens. So continue around with your two single crochet increase. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 30 stitches. That's number one. That's three single crochets. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase and then we're going to switch to black. That's number one. That's four single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same stitch. So because I'm switching to black, this last stitch, I'm not going to finish with my white. I'm going to finish with my black for my color change. So there's no need to tie these at the back or anything because we are going to be coming back to the white. So we're just going to leave that hanging. I'm not going to weave it in or anything. It'll all weave itself up and through. So your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase and this brings you up to um, I am going to weave in my black tail though. This brings you up to 42 stitches. And that's where we're going to stop. This is our last increase. Did I say decrease before? This is our last increase. Um, that's number one. That's five single crochets and I have two left hands apparently all of a sudden. And so your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. So this is what you should have at this point. Uh, staying with our black, we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch around and then we'll go back to our white.
So I'm on my last stitch. I'm not going to finish the stitch with black. I'm going to grab my white here that's just kind of hanging around and I'm going to finish the stitch. So just pull down on your black but just kind of leave it hanging there. You don't need to because we're gonna, again we're going to come back to it. You know this. I don't know why I'm blabbling. For the next two rows you're just going to put one single crochet in each stitch with your white and then we'll go back to black. So I'll see you on the other side. So that's my two rows. Um, I'm going to go back to black, but I don't want this to shift anymore. So this is what I was talking about before. There is a way of stopping this constant shift is every other row or every second row or every third row, whatever you want to do, your stitch marker gets space gets used. So instead of changing here, sorry, I'm talking with that in my mouth again. Instead of changing my color here, I'm actually going to go over one more stitch because I keep moving back this way, right? When you work in a spiral, I'm going to go over one more stitch before I go to my black. And that's how I kind of cut down on the extreme of it, but my stitch marker stays in that space. So with your black, you're just going to do two rows of one single crochet in each of the 42 stitches. So, so far, pretty easy peasy. So I'm going to change my color back to white underneath my stitch marker. And this is where it changes a little bit. We're going to decrease. So first I want you to do one single crochet in each stitch around for two rounds. And then with white, we're going to do a decrease. So don't change after your two rows of one single crochet, don't change to black. So that's my two rows. So you can still see a jog, but it's lined up. Whereas because we work in a spiral, me not doing it, you can see it kind of meanders this way. So, even though there's still a jog because we work in a spiral, you're going to notice the straight line. Anyway, we're staying with her white for the decrease. And then we're going to go back to black. So, the decrease um, is going to be five single crochets and a decrease. And this brings you down to 36 stitches. So that's number one. That's five single crochets. There's a number of different decreases you can do. Well, I mean, they're called different, the same thing, but they're different styles. So you can do a regular decrease, which is, you know, go in, pull up a loop, go in, pull up a loop pull through all three. Then, then there's the invisible decrease which is the exact same thing as a decrease except for using the front loops and then there's the other invisible decrease <laughs> the one that I use currently. Um, I've used the other one in the in the past but currently I use this one so I go in the front loop only and I go zip around to the other front loop without pulling through which is different than uh, the other invisible decrease where you actually pull through like you would a normal decrease but in the front loops. This one is actually invisible. Well, I mean not entirely. You can't get entirely invisible but pull through 
and then finish the stitch. So that's the decrease I'm going to use. You can use whichever decrease you, you want that you're comfortable with. So now we're going to go back to black. This is my decrease and normally we'd be doing a color change here but as you can see my color changes have been over here. And because we did so many rows in between our color change now I'm two stitches behind. So now I'm going to do my color change two stitches over. This is still my marker spot. So I guess I shouldn't have said before I'm changing the marker spot. I'm not changing the marker spot. I'm changing the where I change my color spot. So then I'm going to go in and do my color changes. Still the same amount of stitches. And that's the confusing part is you just have to remember that right now you've currently done two stitches of the next row even though you've just switched your color. But your next row is just one single crochet in each. But count these two because you should have 36 stitches. So that's the only thing that's confusing. That's why I've never brought it up on my channel before because it is quite confusing to, to even say. So still keeping with the black, we're going to do four single crochets and a decrease. That's number one. That is four single crochets and then your decrease, whichever decrease you choose to use. And repeat. So this is what you should have at this point. Um, I'm going to be going back to white for one row and then back to black for the muzzle. So I do my color change over here. So my white is right there. That's where I'm going to be doing my color change. So now I'm currently one, two, three stitches out from my color change. Do you see how it just moves around? You can move your marker. Your numbers won't change. You will still have the same amount of stitches if it's easier for you to do it that way. So I'm going to do my color change here and just keep doing my one single crochet in each stitch around. So that's my one row. I'm going to change back to black um, and do one round of one single crochet in each stitch and then I'm actually going to start increasing again. So this is where I change my colors. So one single crochet around with black and then we'll start increasing for the muzzle. So your first increase is going to be one single crochet and an increase because that was the last one that we did. And this brings you back up to 36 stitches. So we're just increasing for the muzzle. Um, that's number one. That's four single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat. Okay. 
Our next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 42 stitches. And again, this is as much as we're going because our head initially was 42 stitches. That's number one. Oops. That is five single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So for the next two rows, you're just going to still, still with black, for the next two rows, you're just going to do one single crochet in each of these 42 stitches and then we're going to start decreasing. So I will see you on the other side. So this is my two rows, so it looks pretty funny like that. Um, let's put our eyes in before we start decreasing so we can put some stuffing in this. So try to make that at the back. So we're going to, it's going to be sewn like that to the body. So turn this over to put your eyes on the front. So <laughs> what I did is I got some felt. And I used these um, 14 mil eyes. Got my clips. So I have these 14 millimeter safety eyes, and that's what I used. I figured he needed some big eyes. If I can get the package open. Oh my gosh. So if you've got these great big eyes, just because of the color of him, I would suggest using the white felt as well, but you can do whatever the heck you want because it's your project. So if you're doing what I'm doing, I'm just going to cut some of that off. So you just need two circles. Yeah, I know, I'm just, I just wasted a whole bunch of felt, but... Felt is dirt cheap if you shop at the dollar store. So I don't do circles well, but after you cut your circle, kind of do a one of those. Oh, my scissors don't want to work. Do a one of those and then a one of these. What is wrong with my scissors? So that's where your little thingy is going to go. Oh, I didn't even cut anything. Scissors aren't working. The scissors were working, the ones I use upstairs. Anyway, cut a little hole into it. You get the gist of it. Just shove your thing through. So you don't need a whole lot of white, but just enough to make it noticeable, right? So I put mine in. Um, so right here where I did three white, again, make sure that's at the back. Here where I did the three rows of white, that's where I put it in. Um, so just right before this black piece actually is where I went in with my eye. show you here. So that's where I went in. So it's in the white row, but just before we go into the black. So I did six stitches in between them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that means six visible stitches in between. Oh, can't get that in. There. So one, two, three, four, 
three, four, five, six. So if you can see six stitches in between, that's what I did. So that's where I put my eyes. So once you're satisfied, you can just put the backs on. So we can start stuffing this. We're going to start decreasing. So I just like to push all mine out. Just make sure your stuff is all out of the way. I like to push mine out, dig a hole, fill the hole. I find it, um, it saves me from overstuffing because if I don't do that, I will overstuff. And then I just kind of pack it down and around. Did my thing start rolling? So now we're going to start decreasing with the black. We're staying with the black. Um, we're not going back to white, so you can actually cut your white off. But um, leave a tail. Now that it's stuffed, we can just stick that down into the stuffing. Let me unwrap myself from my black. There we go. So, we start decreasing. We're going to start with five single crochet decrease. So that's number one. That's five single crochets and then a decrease. So I'm going to use my invisible ones, even though I'm using black and it's not going to be that noticeable. The, the gapping might be noticeable and that's what I'm concerned with. So I'll repeat this all the way around and I will see you on the other side. The next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. Let's bring you down to 30 stitches. That's number one. That's my four. And then my decrease. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. And then the round after that is going to be two single crochets and a decrease, then one single crochet and a decrease. <laughs> I'm going to put all that on my pause screen and I will see you right back here. So I'm done my one single crochet decrease. I need to put some more stuffing in this. And then, um, so you can fasten off, or you can cinch here if you want, but I put an extra row in mine. I don't do a lot, but I did a row of one single crochet uh, in each stitch before I fastened off and cinched. Um, just to give it a certain look. So, um, I'm just going to finish stuffing mine here. So keep in mind, it's got to come in here. So we, we came in, we decreased, and then we came back out. So when you're stuffing it, try not to overstuff it. Because you want to be able to keep that shape. Oh crap. So you should have 12 stitches. Um, I just pulled up my, 
my last few stitches. Um, you should have 12 stitches, so I just want you to do one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. And then we'll cinch it. So squeeze it so that you don't get the big gaps. And that's another reason for doing this last row is because I don't want these big gaps. It is black and with white stuffing it's going to be noticeable. So that's my one single crochet around. You can fasten off. Oh, that was was I even on camera? Again, I'm really zoomed in, so <laughs> I may meander off camera from time to time. You just need a, um, a cinching tail and a weaving tail. So before I weave, I want to make sure that this is as full as I kind of over full, but just up in these edges, because if you, if you cinch, and it's not quite full around here, it will look wrinkly. And you don't want a wrinkly snout. So I'm just making sure all mine is kind of tucked up underneath here before I do this. And then I go in the front loop and out the next front loop, just like that. All the way around. You can skip one if you want. You don't have to hit all 12 stitches. It won't make a difference. The appearance won't make a difference. So once you get back around, you can pull your cinch. It's hard to see, I know. Uh, does that help a little bit? So I'm going to pop across, and not a huge pop across, just underneath that cinch hole. And I'm going to go through my loop and make a knot. Wiggle it. I'd like to do it in the other direction as well. I wiggle it. And then you can weave. So going in as close as you can. Oh man, I hate working with black. Have I mentioned how much I hate working with black? Pretty sure in every video I work with black, I've said this. So go in as close as you can to your lead so it just looks like a stitch. And going in three different directions is the rule of thumb. You have to probably play with it, move your stuffing around, get it to what you want. So I decided when I was doing this guy's head that he needed some little nostrils. <laughs> you don't have to do this. It's just me. But if you want to do it, this is what it'll look like. Little white nostrils. So it doesn't really matter where you come in, it just matters where you pop it out. I'm gonna put one there and then I'll pop across. Just try to keep it um, even. What row am I in? I'm way down here. So I'm gonna pop across and then I'm gonna go up here and I'll just pop out the white area. So, if you pull too tight like I just did, just pop it out. So these nostrils are a little different from my other nostrils, but it does not matter. He's super cute regardless. Anyway, I don't think it's necessary to make knots or anything. 
because I don't think anyone's going to be plucking at your nostrils. Of course, I guess you never know. Depends on who it's going to. So now that his head's done, we can set that aside and we can start his body because this is going to get sewed to his body. So we're going to start the body from the butt up. So we're going to start with white. We're going to do a magic ring of six single crochets. Keeping with the white, you're going to do two single crochets in each stitch around. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. my one single crochet and then my next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same stitch. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 24 stitches and then we're going to change to black. So we're changing to black so I didn't finish my last stitch with my white. I'm going to finish it with my black. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to let everything just kind of hang. I'm going to weave in my black tail though. So with your black, you're going to do three single crochet increase. So that I'm at the end of my five, four single crochet increase, I'm going to change to white. That way I'm not. So I'm finishing my last stitch with my white. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. That's number one. That's five single crochets and then two single crochets in the same space for your increase. So your next round is going to be six single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 48 stitches. That's number one. That's six single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. Your next round is going to be seven single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 54 stitches. And then we're going to stop our increases anyway. That's number one. That's seven single crochets and then your increase of so two single crochets in the same space. After this row, we're going to black.
So I'm on my last stitch. I'm going to finish with my black. I don't really need to start moving my marker or anything yet because um, I haven't really done a whole lot of changes that pushes me backwards. So with black, you're going to do one row of one single crochet in each of these 54 stitches and then you're going to go back to white. So I'm on my last stitch. I'm going to finish that with white. So with white, I want you to do two rows of one single crochet in each of these 54 stitches. And then we're going to change back to black. So I'm using my stitch marker spot to do my change to black. Things are starting to move. So you're going to do two rows of black. So that's my two rows of black and I'm going to go back to white. I think I'm going to do it under my marker though. So with white I'm going to do my two rows of white and then I'm going to go to black and I'm going to do one row of black. So if you want to work ahead of me you can do that. So I'm black, I'm black around with my white. <laughs> I'm back around with my white and I'm going to switch to my black. I'm only doing one row of black and then we're going to go to the white and I'm going to do one row of white and a decrease row. So we're going to start bringing her in. So we're going to go back to white and um, we're going to do um, one row of one single crochet in each stitch and then we're going to do a decrease row and we're going to continue to decrease. <clears throat> so this row is just one single crochet in each stitch. So I'll meet you back here for the decrease row. So I'm all the way back around with my one single crochet. We're going to do seven single crochets and a decrease. So that's number one. That's seven single crochets. And then I'm going to do invisible decreases, even though we're doing a row of single crochet in between them. I'm still just, I like the look of it, because there isn't a look of it. <laughs> anyway, continue this all the way around, and I will see you on the other side. So we're going to change to black 
And we're going to do, I'm going to do two stitches over before I make my change. And I'm just going to move my marker to that spot. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each stitch. And then we're going to come back and we're going to do another decrease. Currently, by the way, you should have 48 stitches. We're going to do another decrease, which will bring you down to 42 stitches. We're going to do six single crochets and a decrease. So we're going to do another color change. Because I'm doing decreases, I have to move over at least two stitches. But again, this is not going to change your count. You're still going to have the same amount of numbers. So you don't need to do this. I just want my jogs to be all in a straight line. I don't want them to meander. And that's the only reason I'm doing it. But moving your stitch marker does not change the number that you have in your round. Your round is still going to be the exact same number. So with white, you're going to do one single crochet in each of these 42 stitches, and then we're going to do another decrease. So your next round is going to be five single crochets and a decrease. So bring it down to 36 stitches. And then we'll change to black after. So I'm back round. I'm going to change to black for my marker spot. And with black, we're going to just do one row of black and then we're going to go back to the white and do a decrease. So that's my one single crochet around. I'm going to go back to my white. So with my white, we're going to do four single crochets and a decrease. That was number one, even though it's black. <laughs> That's four single crochets and then my decrease. And repeat. So this will bring you down to 30 stitches. You're doing every single row is done six times, if that helps. So I'm going to go back to black and for the next two rows you're just going to put one single crochet in each of those 30 stitches. So I've done my two rows of black. I think it's time to start stuffing this guy before we get too far into it. Uh, let's see, where are we? Uh, so 
we're going to change to white and we're going to do just do two rows of the um, same thing one single crochet in each of these 30 stitches and I think shortly we're going to be decreasing again I just wanted to build up his chest to be a little bit longer so So we're going to go back to black, back in black, Hit the sh anyway, um, <laughs> we're going to do two rows of the black and then we're going to do another two rows of the white, then we're going to start decreasing again. So we're getting there and then we get to sew the head on. So we're going back to white and we're going to do two, our last two rows. This is going to, we're going to start decreasing after these two rows. So do your two rows of white, change back to black and I'll meet you back for the decrease. So that's my two rows white. I want to just start, continue to start. I want to continue to stuff because um, we're going to start our decreases now. We're going to change to black. We are closing this off. Um, I know a lot of people sew their heads on with both ends being open. I, I can't wrap my head around the logic. So um, I did mine a little bit differently. Um, I used a mattress stitch and therefore both ends got closed. That's why we closed the end of the head. And then I just used a mattress stitch. It's a nice tight, no head wobble kind of a way to do it. So um, we're gonna be closing this off as well so if you can poke on this and it bounces back that means it's stuffed enough but if you poke on it and it stays down that means you need more stuffing so good way to test whether you're overstuffing or not um, if you can see your stuffing through your yarn considering it's amigurumi and we go down a hook size to build it there should you shouldn't see any stuffing if you do um you've overstuffed it now for stuff like you know the black nose if you hold this in a certain light i can't really you can see stuffing through there like some of these little holes but that's where we were doing decreases and even though they were oh see that what i hate about black but even though they were invisible decreases it still leaves a little bit of that gap and um so in situations like that, it doesn't really count. But anyway, I digress. Changing to black. And we're gonna do, start our decreases again. So we ended off at four single crochet decrease. So we'll start with our th three single crochet decrease. So I'm going back to white. And with white, I'm gonna do two rows of one single crochet in what should be 24 stitches. So 
So I am changing to black. And with black, I'm going to do two single crochets and a decrease. That's number one. That's number two. And then your decrease. So this will bring you to 18 stitches. So I'll do this all the way around. So staying with black, you should have 18 stitches. And this next row is going to be one single crochet in each of those 18 stitches. And then we're going back to white. Um, this is my 18th stitch. I'm going to switch to my white. And with white, I'm going to do one single crochet and a decrease. And this brings me down to 12 stitches. So I just want to make sure that i am got all my stuffing. Well, not all of it, because I'm still going to need to stuff it before I close it, but you know what I mean. So, like I said, with white, we're going to do one single crochet decrease, and then we're just going to do one single crochet around. So that's my one single crochet. So I go right into my decrease. This brings you down to 12 stitches. So before we cinch it, you still can probably have to put a little bit of stuffing in. I'm going to fasten off. Oh, my black is still involved here. So I'll just go into your next stitch, do a slip stitch, fasten off. So um, I fastened off of this. There's no tail. There's no nothing. So this guy is has to be long enough. And this is, this is up to you. So this is how I'm going to do it. I do a mattress stitch. And I first do it right at the base, around the head. But then I go around a second time, and I go down a row, and I do the mattress stitch. That way it pulls it right down. It's so nice and tight that it isn't going anywhere. So I go around twice. So you're going to need enough yarn to go to cinch, and then sew your head on going around twice. I probably have too much. I always do. Um, finish, finish filling before we cinch. And because we're sewing a head on, really make sure it's full. I hate sewing heads on, by the way, but, um, being, it's a zebra and I wanted the stripes going <laughs> the other way. I chose to do it this way. Um, yeah, just make sure it's got a significant amount in there. Nice and sturdy. Your stitches will make it sturdy anyway if you, whatever you choose to do. Uh, I'm going to show you the difference between grafting and mattress stitch. There's not much of a difference, but I'll show you. At the moment, <laughs> we're just going to um, cinch this. So I want you to go in the front loop and out the front loop of the next stitch. Just like that. So just go in and out like that all the way around.
So I'm back around. So I'm just going to pull that closed. And you want to secure this cinch, so... I do it twice. So I'll make a knot. Wiggle it. And then I come across the other direction. And I make another knot. So you're just going to go through the loopy loop that you just created. And then wiggle that. Pulls that knot down nice and tight. So... I'm not weaving, but I do need to pop out over on the side for my head. So this is your jog. Make sure that's at the back. We're going to put all the hair and stuff at the back. So this is a difficult task. Probably going to be even more difficult to do on camera. But try to attempt to put a couple of pins in. I don't think mine are long enough, but the last time I didn't get my head sewn on that straight. So, and since I have to show this on camera, <laughs> so um, I'm going to first for my mattress stitch, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab a couple of pieces but I'm going to stay fairly low, like fairly close in. And I'm going to grab a couple of bars, just like that. I'm going to do the majority of this off camera. You don't really need to pull tight. You can just keep it all loose right now. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab a couple of bars just like that so I'm fairly close together I grab bars here I'm grabbing bars here when I come back around I'm gonna be in the next row higher and lower and it's really gonna tighten up and that's what a mattress stitch is and you just keep doing that I'll keep showing you so just make sure you're staying in the same row. Now it's going to be a little more difficult when you come over to the side because you're just going to have to make up bars. You're just not going to have bars to go into. So as you can see, you can keep... These are all my strings from what I just did. You don't need to pull them tight every time you make them. You can just pull after. It makes sewing on a head a lot easier. So that's going two bars to two bars, two bars, two bars, two bars, two bars. Grafting is a little bit different and a little bit snugger, but I'm not going to do graft. I'm not going to graft the head on, but grafting would be to pick up one. So you pick up two bars here and then you're going to pick up one of the bars you just had and then a new bar whereas this is two bars two bars two bars two bars grafting would be you know you start off two bars two bars but then I would have gone up and picked up one of these bars from the bar be two bars before one of I love when my camera shuts off in the middle of me doing stuff so grafting would be picking up an old bar and one new bar whereas my, mattress stitch is two bars two bars two bars two bars does that make any sense am i explaining this properly i'm just going to do a mattress stitch around so i will show you just make sure you're staying in the same row so my both my rows top and bottom are white and then when I come back around, I'm probably going to go into the black. Now, I'm going to come across a section like this where, you know, it's kind of mixed. A mixed bag of black and white. But because we're going around two times, I don't think you need to be super duper serious about that. I take this pin out. See why pins are not a good idea. So, I've done that so far. And you can see these are all loose. I haven't pulled them yet. And then you can pull at any time and it'll bring that all together. You won't even see any stitch marks. So we're over here on the side. Can okay, this pin is useless. I'm going to take it out. 
So we're over here on the side. I just want to make sure I'm not getting my head all cockeyed again. The stitches run this way, so you don't have any bars to pick up this way. So you're just going to have to pretend. So I just go in and pick up the sideways bar. So a stitch? I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just go in and grab something sideways. And that's what you're going to do. Well, down here you still have stitches you can grab. But up here, so again, I don't have to pull tight. I can keep this loose, which gives me the wiggle room. Just make sure that you're staying in the same general area when you do this. So I know you probably shouldn't be taking lessons off of me, the one that doesn't sew very well. I know how to do it. I just can't do it. So again, I've got all my loosey-goosey things, and this is where I'm going to pull, and then it's just going to magically pull together. So it's a very tight stitch in itself, and then when you go around two times, when you go around two times, sorry, I just had to take my pins out. It's, um, it's even better because when we come back around the second time, you're going to go up higher and lower and then you're going to pull and it's going to be great. So continue whichever way you're doing it. Continue this all the way around and I will see you on the other side. So I am back around. This is my last stitch and I've closed up what I've already done. So your head's pretty good, but it's still wobbly, which is why I go around two times. So now that it's in place, it's a lot easier. So now I'm going to come way up here into this black stitch, these black bars. And this is going to seem like a, a big long stretch. And it is. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to pick up these two bars down here into the black. And it is. Your stitches are going to be way taller now. So your stitches are much, much, much bigger than they were. So we just keep going around. Over here I'm going to have to fake it, but I'm still keep it pretty pretty high and pretty low. Anyway, when you pull, I know I covered covered it with my hand because I had to pull on it, but it it pulls that right in and you're going to just see once you come back around how firm it really is. So I'm overlapping here a bit. So now your head wobble is normal. I know I'm shaking the whole camera. I'm not really showing you anything when the whole camera shakes. There, I hold the camera. Your head wobble is well. I mean, you can shake your own. Anyway, so I'm in the white here. Or I'm in the black here with my white. So I'm just going to come down backwards. So I went onto this side of the stitch before I pulled down. I'm going to make my knot down here. I don't really 
want to see that down there. So I'm just going to come in, grab a couple of bars, make a wee little knot. When I go in to weave, that knot's going to get sucked in, so you won't see it. You won't even see that knot there. So go ahead and really super duper weave. So they say three different directions, blah, blah, blah. But you can do more than three if you want if you want to. So um, just go in as close as you can to your lead so it look, just looks like a stitch. And then pop out wherever. Just don't do one or two. So three or higher and in different directions so keeps it safe and split hairs if you want to and I don't mean that in a bad way I mean you know split the yarn if you want to pop through the yarn and not through a hole it's probably way better and then for added security I cut some of this off I like to make a knot and poke my knot down. So the knot, in theory, is supposed to get, if somebody tried to pull my head off, they would have to get through two mattress stitches, a whole pile of weaving, and then a knot that's supposed to get jammed into the stuffing. So no one's ripping my head off. So again, my head is turned because I don't sew well. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, whatever. See, it's slightly just like my other one. But that's okay actually it's not as bad as my other one so we've put our thing here at the back so we're gonna do um the main and i don't even think it's gonna be noticeable but mine is going to a little baby so i'm okay i'm okay i don't think the baby's gonna care so for the feet i, I decided my bottom of my feet were going to be black but you can decide whatever the bottom of your feet are going to be um mine are black you don't have to follow the same striping pattern I do. I mean, if you want to go off, you know, what I'm showing you and do whatever colors you want to do. I mean, some of you probably may not even do black and white. You could be doing two different colored purples or something. So make a magic ring and put six single crochets in here. Your first round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around. So this will give you 12 stitches. That's my 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. I'm going to weave in my tail here. You don't have to. That's my one single crochet and then my increase of two single crochets in the same space. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase, and this will bring you up to 24 stitches. That's number one, number two, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. So your next round is going to be one single crochet in each stitch but in the back loops only so they're just standing right up looking at you you don't have to turn anything over so just a little 
trick that I picked up along the way. I don't try to go into the back loop. It makes my life difficult. I take this finger and I push it on. <laughs> That's what I do. I just take that finger and I just push it on. So one single crochet in the back loops all the way around and then we're going to go to white. So doing it in the back loops basically turns it from a flat foot into a not so flat foot. We're going to bring up the sides and that's what this back loop business will do. So you'll see it written uh, B-L-O, that means back loop only. So I'm going to white, so I'm not going to finish that last stitch with my black, I'm going to finish it with my white. I almost finished it with my black. So same deal, you can just kind of leave this hanging. It'll all get weaved up inside. So with your white, you're just going to do one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches and the full stitch, not the back loop, we're done that. So one single crochet with your weight in each stitch round. So keep in with the weight. Your next round is going to be two single crochet and a decrease. Yes, I said decrease. <laughs> this is just a foot, so we don't want the foot to be this big. We just want the hoof-ish part to be this big. So that's my one single crochet, that's two single crochet, and then de my decrease is still going to be invisible again you don't need to do invisible if you're not comfortable with it So I'm on my last stitch and I'm going to go to black. So I just did my decrease and I'm going to pull through, but then I'm not going to finish the stitch with my white. I'm going to finish it with my black. So switching colors on a decrease can be confusing to some. You're just going to do one row of black, so 18 stitches with your black and then we're going to go back to white. So we're going to sh start shaping the foot and this is going to be the first round with our white is shaping. So we're going to do some weird stuff. Well, it's not weird, but we're going to do some different stuff. So do your one single crochet. Actually, you're going to do six single crochets. So that's number one. So this is what I'm going to make the toe area. So I'm going to make the hoof kind of go back like that. The rest of it stay normal. So we're going to do one single crochet decrease two times. So that's one single crochet and then a decrease one time. One single crochet and a decrease two times. And then you're going to do six single crochets back to your marker. So staying with the white, you should now have 16 stitches. So if you make that be what it's supposed to be, you can see a hoof 
starting to form. It's slight. I only wanted it slight. I didn't want it too aggressive. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 16 stitches. And this is the size we're staying at is 16. We're going to change to black. I'm going to finish my last stitch here with my black. And with my black, I'm going to do two rows of one single crochet in each stitch, and then I'm going to go back to white. So I'm back around, I already switched to my white, but now I'm thinking I need to move over because I already noticed I'm meandering a little bit. Um, I want to start stuffing this. I'm going to change my color under my marker because I am kind of meandering a little bit. So, um, yeah, I'm going to start stuffing this. When you stuff this, the bottom has to stay somewhat flat and this part of the toe, so almost the other side of where your marker is, that needs to get some attention as far as stuffing. So it's kind of up to you to shape as you stuff. So that's kind of the idea. This is supposed to be flat. Your little toe kind of sticks out here, but you need to put make sure the stuffing gets put back here so you get this shape at the front, but not at the back. So that's how I designed it. Anyway, it, it does do that, but you can still put stuffing too much stuffing in it, and then you lose the whole shape of the foot. So with our white, we're just going to do two rows of white. So that's my two rounds. I'm going to go back to black. Oh, I said it this time. And I'm going to do two rounds of black. So I'm going back to white, but I'm doing it under my marker. And with white, you're going to do two rows of white. We're going to be done this soon, and then um, I just decreased at the end before I fastened off, but um, we've got two more rows of white, two more rows of black, and then a decrease. So. My two rows of white are done. I'm going to switch to black and do two rows of black. And then switch black back, switch black, <laughs> switch back to white. Oh my god. So that's my two rows of black. We're going back to white to do a decrease and then we're done. We can fasten off. So. 
So with white, I want you to do one single crochet decrease. That's already my one single crochet, even though it's in black. That's what's at my marker. So that's my decrease. So one single crochet decrease will bring you down to 12 stitches. And then that's where we're just going to fasten off and we're going to whip stitch the top closed. So, I'm going to go into the next stitch, I'm going to fasten off, so you need a sewing tail, cut your black off, stick that down in there so it gets all in there with your stuffing. Finish stuffing this bad boy. So you're going to have to make another one. I'm going to show you how to whip stitch stop shut. You're going to have to make another one of these. So just make sure when you're stuffing it right now, your stuff, your other one, exactly the same. So I've already made my other one for the video. So I just need to check to make sure that they're the same thickness. Because you don't want them to be different thicknesses. They'll, it'll look stupid. So um, I'm going to put my pattern on the screen for you to make your other one. And here's a suggestion change your stripes so this will becomes white that for your other leg I'm going to show you I did that I'm going to get my other zebra I did that for my zebra's ears <laughs> and I think that looks wild but I mean it's up to you it's your it's your guy I'm just making suggestions oh dropped all my stuff okay so let's put him away gather your top closed like that. Now a whip stitch generally is back loop to back loop, but we're just going to kind of fake it. We're going to fake a whip stitch and we're just going to go into to the whole stitch. Now the look of it generally is better back loop to back loop, but um, I think it's no big deal. I do, however, like to make a knot at the end of my whip stitch before I sew it to my guy. So, go ahead and make your other leg. My other leg. And, um, I will see you back here and we'll get the arms going. So the arms are going to start with black as well, if you want them to. They don't need to. I started mine with black. So do a magic ring and put six single crochets in here. Now these are really similar to the foot, uh, but they are different. So this is a foot. And this is an arm, it's longer. Um, 
but it's almost built the same way here it it is still a little different because I wanted this to be all four. I mean, a, a zebra has all four hooves, right? But I didn't want to make it look like he had four hooves. So, ish hoof. So, that <laughs> that's what I'm doing. So, for your first round, you're going to do two single crochets in each stitch. It's going to be similar to the leg. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. Again, I'm going to weave in my straggler after pulling my magic ring closed. Your next round is going to be two single crochet and an increase, bringing you up to 24 stitches. Your next round is going to be done in the back loops only and you're going to do one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. And then we're going to change the weight. So I'm switching to white. So I'm going to finish this last stitch with white. And my next round is going to be one single crochet in each stitch, so the full stitch. So we're going to start decreasing now in this round. We're going to do two single crochet decrease. This will bring you back down to 18 stitches and then we're going to go to black. So that's number one, that's number two, and then your decrease all the way around. So I'm on my last stitch, stick that down in there, I've done my decrease so I, uh, I'm going to finish that decrease with my black. With my black I'm going to do one single crochet in each stitch. So I've changed back to my white. You're going to do two single crochet decrease four times. So that's number one, that's number two, and then a decrease. So you're going to do this four times. One, two, decrease. This is the second time. One, two, decrease this is the third time. One, 
to decrease is the fourth time. And then you should have two single crochets to get back to your marker. And we're staying on white. The next round is going to be one single crochet in what should be 14 stitches. So our leg was 16 stitches, our arm is 14 stitches. So I'm going to go into my next stitch, I'm going to switch to black and I'm going to do my two rows of one single crochet in each of these 14 stitches. So don't forget to stuff as you go. So I'm back around with my two rows. I'm going to switch to white and I'm going to do two rows with my white. So I'm back around and I switch to my black. And I'm going to do two rows of my black. I'm going to switch this under my marker though because I see I'm meandering again. So it's my two rows. Um, it goes fairly quickly because it's so small. <laughs> I'm going to change my color under my marker again. So change back to white. And then with white you're going to do two rows of 14 single crochets. So I'm back around, I'm going to switch to my black and I'm going to do two rows with my black. Easy peasy. So I'm back around and under my marker I'm going to switch to my white and I'm going to do two rows with my white. So I'm back around and I switch back to my black. I'm going to do two rows of black, go back to my white for the decrease so we can end the arm. So two rows of black and I will meet you right back here. So I'm going to switch back to my white and for my last round I'm going to do one single crochet and a decrease bringing me down to 10 stitches and then I'm going to fasten off. So that's my one single crochet and then my decrease and repeat.
So you can go into the next stitch and fasten off with a sewing tail. Snip your black off and finish weaving, or er, finish stuffing. Make sure you're stuffing it, like I said, the same same size, just like your legs. Just make sure you're stuffing it properly. And we're going to do the same thing with this that we did with the leg. So my little hoof part is over here. So I, sh I should have told you this with the leg. You just gotta make sure this is, should be in the right spot. Should be in the same spot mine is. So my little hoof this part sticks out here. So just pull this across and do a whip stitch. I will meet you back here. I'm gonna sew one each on and then I'll meet you back here and I'll show you how I sewed them on. So, <clears throat> now that you've done all your arms and legs, we get to sew everything on. I sewed on one leg and one arm already. <clears throat> so, just make sure your leg is faced in the right direction. So, to get to where I wanted my leg, I just sat him down and then <laughs> once the leg and then I pinned it once I knew where I, it was gonna go you want this guy to sit up on his own so mine seemed to be right on this black circle so I just started off with a crude whip stitch and then I did a mattress stitch just so the leg wasn't flopping around a whole lot because that's one of the things I hate about sewing legs on like this is what it looks like when you actually pick the doll up and it's not sitting anymore. I absolutely hate that. So I'm going to put a tiny knot here and then I literally, once I had it crudely whip stitched on, I just come around and that's when I started doing my mattress stitch. But I'm sure that there are sewers out there that probably sew way better than me. And then I after I did the front, then I come around and did the mattress stitch at the back as well. That way when you pick the doll up from a sitting position, it's not so sloppy, in my opinion.
You would think after all this time of crocheting dolls and stuff that I would know how to uh, sew better, but I guess I am better than I was. So, and then I do a mattress stitch back here as well. It might seem like overkill, but I do not want this leg coming off. If it is going to a baby, I don't want any parts coming off. So then when his legs, when he's not sitting down, they're not so huge. I mean, they still flop, obviously, but not as bad. So if they're sewn on properly, now he's only got one arm on, so he's a little lopsided to begin with. <laughs> Where's my other arm? All right. So the arm. The arm's tough because it looks like a hoof, right? It looks like slightly. It looks like a hoof and not an arm. So it was... I struggled to wrap my head around it. So because my head is slightly turned, I had to be careful on how I actually sewed it on, but I used the white stripe there to do it. I didn't quite go up to his neck, but um, I had to do mine upside down because I'm right-handed. But this one, it was just the whip stitch. I didn't do a mattress stitch, just did a whip stitch. But I did bring my corners in. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Because I hate this whole block look that this gives you. Now you're going white on white, so it may not be as noticeable as it would normally be. But this is what I do. So I go down into the corner of the arm into the doll and I'll shoot out the opposite way and I pull so it kind of brings that corner in and around and then I go up into this corner down into the doll and I go this way and it sucks the corner of that arm in. So now it looks more rounded than square and it's so hard to see because it's white on white. But that's what I did. I don't sew under the arm because it makes the arm stick up. And then I just weaved. Now I still want to make a tiny wee little knot because I'm super nervous about anything coming undone. So, and then I'm just going to continue to weave. It's just added security. Here we go. <coughs> oh my guy. So, we need to do the hair and the ears. My other guy, I did the hair first because it's so much easier to brush it out um, when the ears aren't there. So that's gonna be the plan and then we'll get the ears done. So <clears throat> all I did, and we don't even go actually that far across. So for my guy, um, I only did like four or five stitches across. It doesn't have to be very long, so I just used my hands, but you can use anything that you want. Like if you want to use like your phone case or something, you can do that. I don't think it needs to be that long, but you can wrap it around something. Um, I think that actually the phone case might be too big. I just used four fingers and I just kind of spread them open a little bit.
once you get your whole bunch, you're just going to take your scissors. Cut it just like that and then we do it with the white as well just spreading your fingers apart a little bit once you do that I'm gonna get a smaller hook to put my hair in with I think I'll just I'll just use my four millimeter. So we'll start at the back. So I started literally here and then I worked down and worked up. But you can do it however you want to do it. It's completely up to you. We'll start with black because it's going to be on white. So I just folded the two pieces like in half. And I mean it doesn't have to be exactly in half. Start in the middle and work your way to either side that way you know it's even and I just pull a loop through and then I just wind it around and pull through like I'm making a, a stitch so it makes a knot and then I just branch out from there so pull through and pull through And then just alternate colors. So you're not going to get the exact hole. We're not doing. We didn't do a wig cap or anything because I mean you can't. So once you brush it out, you're not. You're not going to know where the beginning and end is. Do you know what I mean? So um, that's four. I think I will do five across because that's what I did with my other one. I did five across. So again, it might be hard to find a spot, but just jam your hook in wherever. So that's my five across. I'm going to keep going down. So then I put my white, start with my white over here now that I've got where my row is going to go. I can just work across. So I've got my mane down part of my back. I'm, that's where I stopped the last time was this row here. So I just have this one more row. And I actually made this part the skinnier one, just like the back. When I kind of went down to the back, I kind of tapered it. And, oh, I'm stuck on something. I kind of tapered it down so I didn't do five five across all the way down I started to taper so same thing with the head I'm just gonna taper it in this last row by maybe doing three across and I didn't go into this white row that the eyes are in I didn't use that at all so I put my last one in 
just to give you an idea of what I did. So that's the last row that I went into was this black. This white is completely untouched. So, oh, I reach for my brush. I have a wire brush. This is all this crap in here is from when my brushed my other um, zebra out. But this wire brush you can buy at a, any pet store um, for your projects. Um, it is hard to clean out. And you'll have to clean it out often <laughs> when you're brushing this out. But get your wire, get a wire brush if you already have one. And they're the best. You're going to have to hold him <laughs> because this is really going to pull. And then you just start brushing. This takes a super duper long time. So I am uh, probably going to put a chapter in here so you can come back easily and find me to do the ears. But uh, yeah, just get him all brushed out. And then I will meet you right back here and we'll get the ears done and then that'll be the end of our project. So I am done. Mine is a mess, but um, I can brush it out to make it not so much of a mess. It's really long and this is where we have to cut it. That's what I got off of it. This big ball of crap. So, get my big scissors out. And then you give it a haircut. So you can go as short as you want. Um, I'm only taking probably an inch off. And you're not going to need to brush this out because if you've seen a, a zebra's, a zebra's um, mane, it's actually quite bristly looking and and hard looking so there we go I'll might shape mine a little bit just to make it look a little more rounder in here but if there's spots that you know need to be rebrushed or you want to add more pieces to you can certainly do that I think mine's not bad. Just more about shaping now. Try not to get hair all over the place. So, now that that part is done, let's move on to the ears. So the ears are so super duper quick. Starting with black, you're gonna make a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase, and then we're going to go to white. So that's one single crochet. And then your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. So it's my last stitch and I'm going to wait for the next row. So this second stitch I'm going to finish with white. With white you're going to do two single crochets and an increase.
that's number one that's number two and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space So, you should have 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches, and then we're going to go back to black. So this is my 12th stitch. I'm going to finish it with my black. With my black, I'm going to do three single crochets and an increase. So on the second stitch, I'm going to finish it with white. With white, I'm going to do one single crochet in each stitch around. So I should have 15 stitches. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 18 stitches. I want to go black, back, black, or black. Back to black. Jeez, I should do a blooper reel just from this video alone. So I'm going to do my last stitch with black. Or finish my last stitch with black. I'm not going to do my last stitch with black. And I'm just going to do one round of one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. So that's my 18th stitch. I'm going to go back to my white. And for the next three rows, I'm just going to do 18 stitches. One single crochet in each of the 18 stitches. Let me talk properly. For the next three rows. And that is it. You can fasten off. So that's my three rows. I'm going to go into the next stitch, fasten off. So you're going to need a sewing tail and a sewing tail because this is what we're doing to the ear. So we gotta sew up the end of the ear to make it look like that. And then we gotta sew it to the head, so. Try to find this jog in your colors. And that's where we're gonna kind of fold it because you're not going to notice it should be right where your thing is if you did everything right so once we fold it it shouldn't be that noticeable we didn't really do that many rows for it to really meander anywhere but that's been my special word 
of the video is meander. I actually don't even like that word. I think it's a horrible word. Meander. Anyway. So I'm going to tie a knot at the end of my whip stitch. So I want you to fold that like that. And then we're going to not only sew this, we're going to sew up here too. So I am going to go down and pop up here. I'm going to start sewing up here and down. So make sure that's exactly folded in half because this is the shape that you want your ear to be in. So I'm just going to whip stitch this or actually, you know what? Let's not. Let's just go across just for aesthetically looking decent. I'm going to whip stitch the bottom though just because I want it to hold. I can't really notice it there. And I'm going to whip stitch this bottom closed. So this is what you're going to sew into and it's going to be tough, but it's also going to hold really well. So that's not why we're doing it. We're doing it just to get the shape of the ear. So that's the shape you need. And then you can just kind of squish this this way. And that's how we're going to sew it on. So try to just put it over. Oh. I gotta zoom out for this. Yes, sir. So just try to follow the eye, right? And that's where it's gonna go. So I'm just gonna use the black and white stripes in this row. So that's an easy way, I guess, to tell you how to do it. So I'm just gonna go down into the doll and I'm gonna come right up in the middle of that ear. And that's how I'm going to sew it on. So you just got to make sure you go down into a different spot. But it's a really good hold if you're doing it right. So now that my ears are done, the last thing we have to do is this tiny little tail. So let's show you what the tail looks like. This is his tail. So it doesn't take any time at all. And this is actually stuffed. So um, I guess it doesn't really matter what we start off with. Here, let's start off with white this time. We're always starting off with black. Let's start off with white. Come back down here. So we're going to do a magic ring of four single crochets. That's four single crochets. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase, bringing you up to six stitches. Now you're probably going, why in the heck didn't she just start with a magic ring and six stitches? Because <laughs> I wanted there to be a little bit of a point. If I was to start with the magic ring of six, there wouldn't be a little point on the end. So that's my first single crochet. And then your increase. So you're only going to do it twice. You only have four stitches. My fat fingers are not built to do something this small, but I do it. 
So, we can switch to black now. <laughs> I should have switched to black in the, this stitch here. So go back out and finish this stitch with black. So with black, you're just going to do two rows of one single crochet in each of these six stitches. This can be awkward being so small. It certainly is for me. And my fat fingers. So that's my first round the hard way. Um, we're going to go to white now. And we're going to do two rows of white. So do you see the point that's on it? That's why I did that. So we're going to go back to black. So finish that last stitch with your black. I'm going to tuck these stragglers now down inside here. We are going to put a little bit of stuffing in here. So with black, I'm going to do one round of black. I apparently have too many stitches, so I'm going to decrease these last two. <laughs> Not sure how I got that many stitches. I'm going to go back to white. Should only have six stitches. Somehow I managed to get more than that. I don't see black very well. <laughs> so, and I'm not wearing my glasses right now. So anyway, one roll of the white for six stitches. And then we switch to black again. So this is just what we're going to do just for the next couple of rows. Black, white, black, white. So if you did like me and ended up with more stitches, don't worry too much about it. It's just a tail. We're going to end with black, so we're going to do one more row of white, and then we're going to do one more row of black, and that'll be the it. That'll be the end of it. And then we got to put hair on it. <laughs> A little tough like an elephant or whatever, I don't even know. They got funny tails. I don't know, for some reason I thought that they would have a tail like a horse, but when I looked it up, they did not have a tail like a horse, so I thought it was comical. I still think it's comical. They got more of an elephant tail, <laughs> or maybe a donkey tail. 
I'm more of a donkey tail, like a mule. Anyway, this is it. You can fasten off. You're gonna need a sewing tail, a little bit of a sewing tail. Not huge, 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 big sewing tail. So cut your white off, because you already weaved it all in, so you're good, it's not gonna come undone. So when I say a little bit of stuffing, I, I seriously mean just a little bit of stuffing. You might have to use your hook to get it in there. But it does, kind of have to stick out a little bit so it's got to be a little more solid than what we crocheted just make sure you're pushing it right down um we're gonna put hair on the end of this tail but i want it to at least be pushed down all right I sewed this tail on open I just thought it was probably easier or even better looking but you can do whatever you want as far as the little hair on the ends um, yeah you don't need much you only need a few pieces so just take your black and white cut it in half and you gotta brush this out too just to make it all fuzzy because their hair is fuzzy. And then you gotta cut it because it's so long. But it's a way easier thing than the mane. The mane wasn't hard, it was just a nuisance really. So these this black and white one are going into the same hole. You don't have too many options at the end of this. Okay, good enough. Three pieces. I can't get in anywhere. So, this just has to be brushed out. Oh, I dented my thingy. So, I'll just cut it off so it's got a little thingy. Oh, I made a mark on my... Th I don't like that. Oh my god, I got hair all over me. So... You're going to have to sit him down to see where his tail's going to go because you don't really want it in the way of him sitting. I'm not even on camera because I didn't zoom out. Good stuff. Let me zoom out. So sew so it on open, sew so it on closed, do whatever you want. So a uh, big shout out to Rainy Garcia, subscriber to the page, and um, she's active on my Facebook page as well. She's the one that had requested the zebra, so um, I probably wouldn't have done a zebra otherwise. It just never crossed my mind just because it's so many colors and, you know, I didn't know how anybody would feel about having switching all the colors constantly, so, and um, anyway, so shout out to Rainy for suggesting the zebra. I absolutely love him. He's so cute. Anyway, thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.